David Cassidy seemed to have it all, but he says the spotlight became a blinding glare. After the show ended, he says he fell into an abyss of substance abuse. David Cassidy and the dark side of Partridge fame is our Entertainment Tonight cover story. I was a closet alcoholic, you know. I would go home and sit alone and drink. From 1976 to 1980 were the darkest years of my life, and I spent a lot of them. I don't remember a lot of it, because I, I spent a lot of it trying to get numb. I spent it getting inebriated. For me, the need to numb the experience, because reality was really too painful. After he left the Partridge family, David Cassidy's life took a downturn, and he says that those years were filled with pain. In recent years, David has opened up to E.T. about how helpless he felt because of a series of tragedies, including the death of his father in a fire that filled him with despair. I understand what that's like to have a feeling of no hope. I felt it. I felt the darkness when I lost my dad, I lost my career, I lost everything. I left it, and suddenly my, the world that I knew was gone. And um, I sat in my room for nine months and went, I don't know what to do. I'm just going to sit here until something comes to me. He says he felt stereotyped by Hollywood and no one would hire him and that he became dragged down by a sense of hopelessness. You have to know I'm sick inside. I want to get well. And for me, it was about I don't want to live another day in this kind of hell, feeling this kind of pain feeling this kind of loss. His partridge fame, which once had been a tremendous high, had plunged him into the lowest of lows with a feeling of isolation. I understood, oh, maybe 10 years ago, when the hysteria that Michael Jackson and his lifestyle, what it became. I understood it like very few people. I talked to John Lennon about this. You know, there's a handful of people in the world that really understand what that's like, where you can't go anywhere, you can't walk down the street. And, um, or they're selling your garbage. It makes you very paranoid. It keeps you inside. And it hides you from the world. And for me, I became more and more frightened that if I revealed who I was, that people wouldn't love me. The theater became David's ticket out and ignited his comeback. He starred on Broadway with his half-brother, Sean, in Blood Brothers. He became a successful songwriter and jump-started his singing career. This morning, I woke up with this feeling I didn't know how to deal with. Unlike many stars who hide their problems from their fans and the media, David feels telling his story is important. My life is pretty much an open book as I talk openly and honestly about my substance abuse and my alcoholism, and I was desperately afraid to share that with people. I thought people would stand in judgment about me and how how weak I must have been or how um, sad I must have been. He says through analysis, he pulled himself together and has been completely sober for a number of years. David promises his TV movie for NBC, The David Cassidy Story, will include both the good and the bad. I'm not ashamed of any of it, and I'm, I'm proud that I survived it, and I'm, I'm really proud of all the, I think, the success and the impact that I had on a whole generation of people, and I'm very flattered that people still really care. I think I love you. I think I love you. Today, David has a very bright outlook on life, and he admitted to us he has a rather extensive collection of Partridge memorabilia that he rarely looks at, but keeps locked in a room in a house he owns in Connecticut.